Hello and welcome back to Gary's Garage and in this episode we're going to be building a rotisserie for my Legnum VR4. So last episode I introduced you to my Mitsubishi Legnum and we moved it out of the barn that I have it here in preparation for what I've been doing this week. And prior to this shot, I have been uh, borrowing a trailer from my dad's work, which is just in front of me, and towing it behind the Shogun, which is why I did all the work on it, in order to pick up a four-post ramp and another Legnum shell. So why another Legnum shell when I've got one sat just down there? Well, uh, the opportunity presented itself to me to pick this up off a very good friend who had got it a few years ago in order to reshell his car, but unfortunately that uh, hasn't happened. He had a bit of a uh, health issue and he's not really going to be able to do it. And rather than see this shell go to scrap or go to somebody who's not going to appreciate it, I jumped on the opportunity to get hold of it. And I've got it here as either a backup for when I try to repair my shell and either find it's too far gone or I mess up the work I want to do to it or if I manage to do my shell then I've got another car here that I can start to build up and, re and save another one and get it back on the road. So those are the choices I've got. Um, this one is almost identical to mine. It, again it's Trigger Mauve. The chassis number is almost identical. The only real difference is that this one has a moon roof whereas my one has a solid roof. But other than that, they're practically exactly the same cars. And it's quite useful to have this here because one of the things I want to do today is build a rotisserie so that I can support it front and back and allow me to rotate the car up onto its side in order to uh, get it cleaned up and do the welding that needs done on it because with the experiences of doing my Anglia, I do not want to be welding above my head, that's just a pain, even though I've now got this four post lift that's come from my dad's. Even getting under there and still welding above your head isn't great, so if I can do all that with the car on its side, all the better. So I have a selection of steel here in front of me, which I'm going to start to make up a rotisserie. So don't worry, some of it does look a bit scabby, but it's just surface rust, uh, because obviously these come unprotected. So we'll give them a good clean up, and let's get started with building a rotisserie to bolt onto the front here where the uh, bumper goes and the same on the back. Okay, so that's the first section of stuff uh, cut and ground back in preparation for welding. So what I've got is a big long length that I had. It's been cut down in half to make the base plates. And these will be the uprights that go off the middle. And then I'm going to have a pair of 45 degree supports on either side. And that will hopefully provide a bit of side to side strength, stop it from falling over and then there will be the pin at the top with the crossbar that's going to go onto the bumper pickups. But the first step will be to tack these together uh, for front and back, get them the same and then I can look at uh, finish it, fully welding them up and adding on some, uh, some wheels to it. So let's crack on and get that bit done. So that's the two main bits now 
all welded together with the diagonal supports. See this one standing up by itself over there. The next thing to do is to figure out how I'm going to actually allow it to move along the floor. So I have a selection of uh, little casters and what I'm going to do is use another little bit of box section to make a little bit that juts out and they will be welded onto the bottom of these, one on each corner and there is going to eventually be a uh, brace between the two uprights going down the centre so that will stop them from doing that at either end of the car and then hopefully with those four casters on it I might stick one in the middle of the, the long length as well or two and that should hopefully allow me to manoeuvre it around as I want so that would be the next thing to do to clean these bits of uh, box section up clean off the surface rust so they can be welded drill a hole through them to accept this and get them tacked on so that's the next thing to tackle. So I've made a start now on the bits that are going to go on the front and back of the car. So this one here is going to be for the back and this will sit inside the rear chassis rails and pick up on the point that the tow bar would pick up on. So that should be nice and strong. And the front one I've got here, this is going to pick up again on the front uh, bumper supports. And I think for the next bit for that will be these little off cuts are going to sit inside the chassis rail and I'll use these flanges to either bolt or weld it to this front section and then I'll have to add a couple more uh, little lugs off the side here to bolt it on to where the front bumper bar goes. So we're making good progress and also just making great use of the um, bandsaw that I got for doing the Shogun exhaust, been brilliant for this. So we're doing some 45 degree angles as well as supports for all of these. Probably overkill, but I would much rather put a little bit more effort and time into making this very strong, even if it's gonna be a bit heavier, but rather than having the car fall to the floor and get damaged. So yeah, I'm really happy with the progress so far. So just gonna be continuing on and building this up. So we've cracked on just a little bit and we've got one end of it pretty much ready to go. So rather than having the uh, long bit in the middle joining the two, uh, we didn't have enough decent bits of box section. So what we've gone for is just two extra legs on each side. So that means that each one of these will be independent. But obviously when they're attached to the car, that will tie them all together. And I've always got the option of adding something else in the middle if I find this isn't sufficient. But we've got all the wheels on, we've got a couple with brakes on and that's about ready now to roll roughly into position other than all the rubbish that's in the way on the trailer but that will go somewhat under there and we need to just then finish off the front section which we've got prepped so that will go across there with and picking up on these points here so that's going to be the next thing to do a few moments later Okay, so that's the front end pretty much done and we're now on the back and we've got this bit of framework 
to uh, mount the back and that slots into these holes here in the chassis rail. That is also where the tow bar fits and I have towed with a VR4 up to about 1500 kilos and I know that these is a very strong area so I'm quite confident on picking up on here. So you can slot that in there, mark it, drill some holes and insert some bolts. So that is the back end now securely affixed to the car and we now need to figure out how to actually attach this to the feet that go on the floor. And the big problem is going to be all of this stuff that we've got lined up on the side of the ramp and the trailer at the front. We need to clear all of that out of the way so that we can get the car a bit lower and try to figure out how to get it on without getting it all tangled up in the ramp. So a bit of brain thinking of trying to figure out how we're going to do that. So we'll be back with you in a moment when we're a bit tidier. So chassis is now up on axle stands and the front and rear are pretty much in the positions they need to be, although they are, as you can see, not yet attached. But we're getting close to being able to get it hitched up. And okay, there's, the, there's the back. And the back is only just sitting on the ramp. And as you saw, the front is a little bit off. But I'm not going to be using the ramp and the rotisserie at the same time, really so it doesn't really matter. So yes, next thing to do is figure out where I'm going to drill some holes for pivots because I think it needs to go a fraction higher than it's sitting at the moment, but that is the full extent of the axle stands. Um, and we've got a plate somewhere with some holes in it that's going to be a locking plate with a pin through it to be able to lock it to a specific rotation. So yeah, making some good progress. So that is a combination of quite a lot of work, but the car is now on the rotisserie and it can be moved around. So quite a bit of effort to turn it much past that. So possibly I need to have a tweak on the hinging points to shift the weight, but that is why we made it adjustable. And uh, as you saw, I've got a big plate with a load of holes in it and that's at the back end and that has a bolt that goes through it to lock it in a position, but that for the moment is going to be good enough. And this has taken quite a few days to put together, um, but it has saved you know, some money on not having to buy one off the shelf. Um, so you know, I have time to spend on it and it's quite nice to have something that you've made yourself. And of course it reuses a lot of old metal that I had lying around and are salvaged from uh, around the farm where I've got this um, this barn, which obviously helps to keep that tidy. Um, so that's going to be all I'm going to be uh, doing this week. Um, so that is a load of really good prep work on uh, getting the legnum sorted. Uh, next, I think I'm going to have to do some work on the Shogun because towing the trailers around and um, Doing all of that has made me find out that actually the Shogun is not performing properly. I think there's something wrong with the LPG system, so I need to have a good look at that. And that will be what comes next time on Gary's Garage. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.